Today we're going to talk about understanding the basics of hormones in cows. We're going to try to boil everything down and make it simple and easy to understand as much as we can. The whole process of hormones really acts like dominoes. One triggers the next, which triggers the next. And the whole process really starts in the cow's brain. The cow has a, a gland called the pituitary gland, and she releases the first domino that we're going to talk about today, which is FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone. It's simpler to remember if we reverse the words, because it helps explain the understanding. It's the hormone that stimulates follicles, or it's food for the cow's follicles. So the cow releases FSH, travels through her bloodstream, and eventually that FSH gets back to the ovary and starts growing several different follicles. It is normal for a cow when she cycles to produce or grow multiple, follic multiple follicles at the same time. It could be two, it could be six, it could be seven. As you can see here, we have some smaller or accessory follicles on the ovary, and then we have one larger follicle, which we would call the dominant follicle. Eventually, one follicle starts growing larger, the dominant follicle, and it takes all of the FSH that's being produced. So you can imagine the other small follicles essentially regress and die or starve, and the big follicle, the dominant follicle, is the likely one that will ovulate here in a little bit. That's going to trigger the next domino, or the second one that we're going to talk about called estrogen. Estrogen is produced from that dominant follicle travels through the cow's bloodstream and estrogen is responsible for all signs of the cow being in heat. So those would be things like the cow riding other cows, accepting mounts from other cows, holding her milk, uh, bellowing or vocalizing, uh, discharge, all of those things would be caused by high levels of this hormone in estrogen. Eventually, that estrogen concentration gets back up to the brain, the pituitary, which triggers the next domino or hormone to be released. That's GnRH and LH. GnRH stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone, or again, if we rever reverse that, it's the hormone that releases the gonad. The cow's gonads are her ovaries, and so simply put, we can think of GnRH causing ovulation. Luteinizing hormone is the abbreviation or the full term for LH. But ultimately we're thinking about when the cow releases this, again it's traveling through the bloodstream, getting to the ovary and causing ovulation. Certainly we need to breed the cow with some highly fertile semen around the time of ovulation. After that, think about the ovary like a pimple. Now, the ovary is very similar. If we have an open wound, the first thing the body wants to do is to heal. So we've got an open wound, we've got ovulation that has occurred, and the cow starts filling that wound on the ovary with small little cells called luteal cells. After about five to six days of that rupture, eventually that's going to scab over and heal, and then we refer to that whole structure as a CL, or corpus luteum. That CL produces our next domino, or hormone, which we refer to as progesterone. Progesterone is easy to remember again if we break it down. Promotes gestation. So the CL produces this hormone called progesterone. And progesterone's job is to maintain a pregnancy. Every cow needs two things to stay pregnant. She needs a CL. And that CL needs to produce progesterone for give or take nine months. Just like humans, uh, if both of those are done, this cow will carry and stay safe in calf. And nine months later, she will calve. If she does not produce uh, progesterone, the last hormone that we need is prostaglandin. So the last domino to fall is going to come into play, and prostaglandin's job here is to rid or regress or break down that CL. So progesterone is released, seeks out that corpus luteum, in turn uh, regressing and destroying it. Now we no longer have progesterone, so the cycle will again continue, start over, and reset back to FSH, and the whole process will again cycle back. As a quick review, FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone, think about it as food for follicles. It's feeding them so uh, they will continue to grow. Once we've grown the follicles, we get estrogen and the cow comes into heat. 
After the cow comes into heat, we need GnRH and LH to work to release or to cause ovulation. Once we've got ovulation, we've hopefully got a fertilization and CL will develop, in turn producing progesterone and carry that calf for nine months. If unsuccessful, our last hormone comes into play, which is prostaglandin, and the prostaglandin's job is to destroy and regress those cells, in turn starting the cycle over. That's all we have for today. Thank you.